Hello friends, welcome to the Linen Closet. Thanks for joining me, the Whiskey Hunter. Back with you again, another hunt, another whiskey to review. You know, one day I'm gonna run out of bottles to talk about that I've hunted, then we'll just be on reviews. But that day's not too soon, but um, I can feel it getting closer and closer. Um, you know, I uh, before I talk about the hunt, I, um, you know, always pour these drams right before I start other than the um, tequila I did the other day um, and let's just talk about that for a second keep in mind some of these whiskeys whether it's 12 years 15 18 30 40 have sat many many years in a cask and right from that cask it goes into bottling and then it sits in that bottle to the day you get it and you eventually open it that is a lot of years to be casked and bottled up. So give your whiskey a chance to oxidize a bit, to air out, to breathe. Um, you know, you see uh, people in bars take get whiskey and do shots and throw it back, and that's all good and well for inexpensive whiskey. But, you know, 20, 30 years in a cask, and you invite somebody over and they throw back your good whiskey without a chance to really taste it and experience what we do with nosing and the finish and the taste and all the the aromatics and notes we get from it and they're just missing so much so let that whiskey you know they say one minute for every year in the cask it should sit in the glass and that's a pretty good rule of thumb but give your whiskey a chance to open up if you drink it straight uh, uh, when you pour it into the glass, you're, I don't think you're really getting everything that the whiskey has to offer. And you'll find that you'll pick up a lot more if you do let it sit. So let's talk about this hunt. Um, I'm going to say this is maybe two years ago. And um, I remember going through a, uh, a strip mall and seeing a little like cigarette liquor store there. Not Not per se a liquor store but more a cigarette party store and I went in there and you know they had the cigarettes up there and they had little tchotchkes in the uh, display case and and all sorts of knickknacks kind of around the place and they did have like most of these stores you know um, some alcohol on the shelves not a not a huge selection but I did spot some um, boxes back on one of the shelves uh, and just from the color of it, I knew knew what it was. But, um, you know, this is a Macallan 18-year. You can see the box has is a glossy box. Um, this had this similar color, but it wasn't glossy. Um, I could immediately tell it was a Macallan, but I didn't know much more than that. So, um, it was behind the uh, counter... And I asked him to grab it for me, and he did. Actually, there were two, one behind the other. And, you know, as, as, uh, as I'm seeing this and the guy's going back there, like uh, anything you have a desire for, your heart starts beating a little faster. And, and you, you know, the anticipation of what is it exactly you're looking at as he's getting closer to you and bringing that bottle down. It, it's kind of like fishing and just watching that line. And seeing the waves take the line and it dips and comes up and dips and you're just watching till so eventually it bends way down and you know that it's about to be on well that's what it was like when he was bringing these whiskeys up to me so first of all let me show you that this was the price on the um, container what is it 169 169.99 even two years ago that was a good price on McAllen I think they were still on average 199 back then but you can see this box unlike this box one is matted purple one is glossy purple and the older McAllen's even the um, cask strength the red boxes are glossy as opposed, or, or were glossy. The older ones are matted finish. So he brought it, he brought both bottles up to me. 
Um, and here's what we have. 1987 McAllen at $169. And you can see a little better the difference in the, the matte and the flat finish. So we had two bottles for $169 each, which I got. This is what the 1987 Mac label looks like. Um, this is much darker than today's McAllen. This, well, let's compare them. This is a 95 bottling. They're similar, but actually the one on your right, well, yeah, I guess, I don't know. This one is a little bit darker. Not much, but a little. I don't know if you can tell that. Uh, the newer ones, more recent bottles, in the last two years are even considerably lighter than these. I think that might have something to do with uh, the age of the wood used for casks, maybe the quality of it. So in any case, two bottles of Mac, eight, uh, Mac 18, 1987 vintages uh, was quite a score really excited to get these very hard to find these anymore but I still look I still look for one success there's about 25 failures of going into different stores before you get lucky and hit one so anyway let's go talk about the um, whiskey we're gonna taste today I mentioned this in the last review. This is a sample that was sent to me because the bottle is crazy. This is a Laphroaig 32 year. It's bottled in 2015. It's 46.7% ABV. It is non-chill filtered with no color added and it's been aged in X sherry casks first fill Oloroso sherry it's a really nice color it's a dark gold amber if you were gonna give it amber plus I'd say amber plus two 32 years in a cask they produced a total of 50 or 5,880 bottles. I believe this is done for the 200th anniversary for Laphroaig. These bottles, when they came out, went for about 1,200. Um, very difficult to find now. I think there's maybe, I think there may be up to 16. I've seen them as high as 1,800. It's 100% malted barley mash bill. And uh, they do say that most of the whiskey in here is is older than 35 years old though the youngest whiskey is 32 and we know that you have to put on the bottle the youngest whiskey that is used uh, for bottling so let's take a look at the legs of this 32 year old We've got a nice line there and it's just starting to beat up. Look at the, the continuity of that beating. It's very uniform as we go around. Almost like it's drawn on. They're starting to drop now. They're thick, slow moving. This is going to be a viscous whiskey mouth coating chewy that's what we expect from seeing legs like this if it will will it be we'll find out momentarily onto the nose well sherry is hitting you right away there's a rich sweet sherry behind that is smoke campfire smoke 
you would think that after 32 years in a cask that the smoke would be more subdued, uh, like in some older um, peated whiskeys I've had, but it's, it, it's, uh, it's still pretty prevalent in the whiskey. Um, I had, I'm not a big Laphroaig fan. In fact, I don't even have, own any Laphroaigs. I had a bad experience early on when I first started drinking whiskey of having a 10 year old at a bar. Um, I did not like the taste. It was very much iodine, which is associated with Laphroaigs and uh, Band-Aids. I typically don't like that kind of uh, smoke peatiness in my whiskey. So it turned me off to that um, distiller and it was when I was new into whiskeys or just learning whiskeys and um, I never really pursued Laphroaig. So um, it's been a long time since I visited this distiller. I'm not smelling the iodine per se. I do smell more of a campfire that I would associate more with a bruchladi. Or a lagavulin. Behind that smoke is also a camphor, kind of a mentholated smell. Um, you've smelled camphor medicinally. I don't associate camphor to iodine. I associate camphor to. Um, there are some mints that have a camphor um, aroma to them. This has a really nice nose. I mean, really nice. I, would, I wouldn't guess this to be Laphroaig, though Laphroaig drinkers may immediately recognize this as being Laphroaig. I, I'm, uh, my palate's not educated enough on Laphroaig to tell. There is a bittersweet uh, chocolate. It's very dense. Uh, I'm also getting dark cherries. The um, alcohol is, is, again, subdued as well. Um, I suppose it's been a hell of an angel share that was taken out of a 32-year aged whiskey. There's caramelized sweets, nuttiness, maybe almonds, some uh, spices, nutmeg, A hint of cinnamon, not real um, strong. Toffiness. Dried fruits. Berries. Uh, apricots. Maybe even apples. Brown sugar. Um and kind of a rubbery smell, maybe like um, a latex glove. Not the rubber of a tire, but more latex, like a, yeah, like a latex glove. It's a very complex whiskey. It's got a lot going on. It should for uh, over $1,000 a bottle, eh? It's crazy. Onto the palate. Mm. Very silky on the mouth. Very velvety. Mouth coating. It's not, it's not drying. The smoke is there. It's, um, it's an old smoke. It's well integrated into the whiskey, but it's definitely there. Um, there's, like I said, semi-sweet chocolate, kind of like a bitter chocolate. Um, the sherry uh, flavors are coming in, uh, raisins. 
that chocolate associated with um, with sherry. Let's uh, let's try another sip now that we're acclimated and our taste buds are ready for another sip. Mm. It's a little more drying on the second sip, but watering too. The oak is there. Um, there's oakiness, not sweet, sweet oak. It's more savory. Those dark fruits I mentioned. Dark dried fruits, cherries, dark cherries, raspberries, or not raspberries, blackberries. The ap apricots are there. Blueberries. It's got a meaty taste. It's salted meat bacon it's got leather you kind of associate with older sherry casks fading into a mild licorice taste I get the toffee let's see what water does to this all right we'll just put a drop in here and see what that does to this you know these reviews I do anybody else does especially when you put water in you know it we're almost immediately tasting it and really I would prefer to let the water sit 15 or 20 minutes to really integrate with the whiskey and break it down to bring m even more aromatics to it It gives me more um, of a nutty flavor. Brings out more fruit. T t it's um, putting the smoke more in the background. Let's taste it. More of a licorice note is coming out in it now. Very mouth-watering. The finish is long. The smoke trails. The dried fruits stay with you. It's interesting. It's 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 sweet and bitter at the same time. Kind of like a combination of both chocolate, semi-sweet and milk. It's a pretty good dram. It's, uh, you know, it's a lot of money, $1,200 to $1,800 for a bottle of whiskey. A lot of money. Um, I, I don't know if I'd spend that much, but there are those Lefroy lovers out there that might, if they had the money. It is a really fine whiskey. It reminds me nothing, like I said, of the Laphroaigs I've had in the past. I would rate this, based on the other whiskeys I've tried and that I really like, and those that not so much, I'd put this at about a, a 90. Though I'm sure some people would rate this much higher. Um, it is a fine whiskey high quality but I, I'm rating it about a 90 not bad very fortunate to try this 
Hey, thanks for joining me today at the Linen Closet. If you enjoyed this, please like. If you haven't, please subscribe and share this with your friends in uh, whatever country you happen to be in. Um, next time, we'll try some other interesting whiskey and have another story of a hunt. And maybe I'll have found another bottle on my uh, hunts. I've ha I've, I have gone out hunting. I just haven't been successful. I have recorded them, but I didn't, don't think you guys would want to watch me going in and out of stores where I haven't uh, found anything. But, but I have that video. Anyway, thanks again for joining me, and I'll see you next time in the linen closet.